Good morning. I want to welcome you. Praise the Lord. Back from Mardi Gras. Hallelujah. It was good. Had a last. Good time. Praise the Lord. I did surprise my son, so my leaking did not do anything, which was good. I'm glad about that. Uh, Terry, it was kind of fun. That Terry had, <clears throat> we got there before they did, and Terry came in. And he said, Jordan's here. And so I snuck out and just walked in with the crowd of the group of Karis people. And, you know, and I'm walking in there, and he has no idea. And then we walk into the gym where we're sleeping at. And so then as he's sitting there, and he looks, and he looks back, and he's like, What? <laughs> So, and he was, he was our team leader, and that was exciting. It was good to be led by my son and the Holy Spirit, praise the Lord. So it was a good time. And I had my partner in crime, Terry French, with me, and we had a good time, I'm telling you. It was awesome. I kid you not. All right, let's pray, and we'll get to going. And, um, Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you love us. First and foremost, God, that you adore us. And Father, I just thank you for words that are given, Father, to us and how they speak to our heart and that, Lord, how that changes our heart. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, uh, it's, a, it's interesting how, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit, but um, I've been talking about the heart and, uh, and I don't know if you've never experienced this, but I pray that you have experienced this, but it's kind of interesting whenever... Um, you get a specific word from the Lord and how it ref- changes your heart. You know what I mean? Because it's just tremendous. And we need to learn to walk in that. You know, the word says that we should all desire to prophesy. Amen? And that just, just doesn't mean in the church. It means out there where you're at in the real world. And uh, I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Um, First, I want you to turn with me to Psalms 139, and I want to read verses 1 through 4 first. It says this, and I think this is a NIV version, I'm not sure. It says, You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You know, I love that because what it does for me, it's looking at that on that intimacy of how much he wants to be intimate with you. His desire is that. And so when you look at it in that kind of light, how he wants everything to be about him and you and that your thoughts are his thoughts that your words are his words amen and so that when you're walking in life whenever you say something it's him saying it amen amen so you know i i love that you've searched me and you know me all right look at uh verse 14 says this, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Now think about that. You know, I've I've been talking about the imagination. And I want you to realize that the Father has imaginative thoughts toward you. And those thoughts have been printed in a book of His Word. And that Word are His thoughts and what He thinks about you. But if you don't go to the book, if you don't go to that, and you start letting those thoughts, and there are thousands of them, and I just love that, that's how much he thinks about you. You know, the sum of them is, how vast is the sum of them? Were I to count them, they would be outnumbered the grains of the sand. How many grains of sand are there? He thinks about you a lot. 
more than you realize. And so, you know what I'm getting at is that I want to say, Father, let my thoughts be about you. Let my thinking be about you. Like the sand, like the grains of the sand. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Turn with me to John 4. And I love this story because it's, it's interesting. But Jesus gives a word to this woman, and I just love this. This is about the Samaritan woman. And I want you to start imagining yourself, you doing this. You know, you being like Jesus, and you giving a word. Amen? And I love what it does to her. This is verse 1. It says, Now Jesus learned that the Pharisee had heard he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John, although in fact it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sichar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Joseph Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well, and it was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews did not associate with Samaritans. So he's breaking the law. Everybody got that? He's breaking the law. I love that about Jesus. Amen. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this? Okay, I'm sorry. Verse 10. Jesus answered, if you knew the gift of God, who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him, for he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it from himself? as did also his sons and his livestock. And Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirst again. But whoever drinks the water that I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, now watch this, Go call your husband and come back. She says, I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when, when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the, man, and, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just is quite true. What you have said just, just said is quite true. Now, what's interesting about that is I want you to get an idea of Jesus just had a word of knowledge. And so he spoke to this woman, and he said, he, the Lord showed him that, I mean, him and the Father, because he's acting like a man on the earth, but the Father showed him she's had five husbands, and the man she's living with now. And so Jesus speaks that to her. And what I love about that is, watch what happens, because I just love what happens to her heart. Because now she knows, what? Let's go on. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worship on this mountain. Oh, hold it. Okay. I, I'm sorry. Verse 16. He told her, go call your husband and come back. She says, I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you're right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you're a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but the Jews claim that the place where the mountain we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you'll worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth, for they are for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship him, worship in the spirit and in truth. The woman said, now listen, to this. she doesn't know who he is yet. I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. So she doesn't know who he is yet, but he's already read her mail once, and he's getting ready to do it again. 
Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, am he. Now let's go down to verse 39. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I'd ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they, are, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of this, words, because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, We are no longer believed just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. You know, it's amazing whenever a word is given and how it strikes that person's heart, what happens to the person. She went into town and she became one of the greatest evangelists ever. And she converted that whole town. They all came out to see Jesus. Amen. And then he started speaking words to them. And those words started painting the pictures of what they believed and how they became believers. And yet Jesus hadn't died on the cross yet. So I want you to think about that. That's kind of cool. But they believed in him. They believed in the Messiah. They didn't know who he was. But how that word changes that heart, just like that moment. You know, it's, it's just amazing. And I love that. And I, I desire that. I mean, I absolutely desire to be able to walk in that. I see testimonies of people that are doing that. And I'm like, you know, I want to I walk in that. You know, amen? And we should all want to walk in that. Because there's a scripture given... And uh, I'll read this to you. Um, and I got to go to my other. Well, let me go here. First Corinthians 14. I want to read this to you. Let me make sure. I wasn't going to go here, and then I just feel quick to share this scripture with you. So, yeah, verse uh, 25 says this. Now, this, 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 whole, this whole passage is about prophecy. But I want, I want you to see how this operates, and it's really neat. And thus the secrets of his heart are revealed, and so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is truly among you. That's how prophecy should operate. And when you start, when you start walking in that, and you start giving those kinds of words to people, that's going to be the result. The secret things of their heart are being revealed, so they know that God is revealing this to you. And they become believers because of it. You know, this woman, in Samaritan woman, she became a believer. She was looking for the Messiah. That's really cool too. But when Jesus started reading her mail, she knew that, man, I am with, I am in, this guy is the real deal. You know what I'm saying? So I'm getting at is uh, desiring prophecy, desiring it, going after it. You know, I'm going to just share with you something. Um, uh, we prayed, Terry, and uh, Terry, he may share about this, but I'm just going to share this. Um, they prayed for a blind guy. And uh, anyway, I don't know if the man got healed. No, I wasn't around it. But he did get filled with the Holy Spirit. But the Lord spoke to me, and he said, if you never, you're never going to see a blind guy healed unless you what? That's right. You got to do it. You got to you got to step out and pray for the blind guy. You're never going to raise anybody from the dead unless you step out and do it. You're never going to prophesy unless you step out and say, "I'm going to prophesy. I'm going to learn this. I want this." Amen. You're never going to do those things unless you practice, unless you try. And if you fail, what happens? You're practicing. It's okay. Your pride gets hurt. You shouldn't have any pride. And all I'm getting at is that I'm not afraid to do that stuff. I'm not at all. Because I really don't have any pride. I can't heal a person, but Jesus can through me. 
And I believe that when I lay my hands on the sick, they recover. Amen. I had one guy prayed with. I'm, I'm not going to share this in the morning, but I will say that <laughs> he, I had free healing. That was one of my things. So he wants to, and Terry can attest this. He was there with me. This guy wanted to argue. He's, he's one of these guys that it was like a, um, he's a time waster. And that's what Danny DeGaudio says. You've got to watch the time wasters. He said, there'll be people that the enemy will bring to you. They'll want to waste your time. And so this guy was a time waster. So he said, free healing. I said, you bet. I said, that's part of the price of what Jesus paid on the cross. Well, pray for me. Okay, we prayed for him. I didn't get healed. So then he went. I said, well, let's pray again. Praise God. I'll pray again. I'm not afraid to pray again. Prayed for him again. Nothing happened. Anyway, he wanted to argue. I read through the Bible 13 times and started giving me all this other spill, and I just kept. My flesh wanted to rise up and fight with this guy, but I said, no, nope, not going to do it. Jesus loves you, you know, and I'm, you know, kind of, and then he headed off down his way. And he didn't get healed, and that's okay. Maybe he did. I don't know. I was praying, though, that God was going to zap that boy and knock him flat out, you know, like, bless God. That's the power of the Most High God, you know. It didn't happen. It's okay, you know, but. But if you don't step out and try that, you're never going to see it. So I'm just want to encourage you, step out. Make a fool of yourself. It's all good. It's okay. You come back and tell me your testimony, and I'll put my arm around you and love on you and say, good job. I'm proud of you. Way to go. It's okay. It's not a big deal because it's not about you. It's about Jesus. Amen? has nothing to do with you. It's all about him. Now, with that said, let's get back to this. I'm sorry I took that little curve, but it was good. You needed to hear that. Amen? So, let's go to, and thus the secrets of his hearts are revealed. You know, I love the secrets being revealed. Amen? We need to see those things. We need to want those things. We need to desire those things. Amen? Turn with me to Philippians 3. And, and the thing that's interesting for me, and God's been talking to me about this, and I'll, and I'll share this with you, something that really touched my heart and uh, was something that was told by Rusty, and uh, it really just blessed me. Um, I want to go to verse Philippians 3. I'm not Hebrews, Doug. Let's go here. It's easier for me. I want to hear it in this other version. It says this, New King James. Maybe. Yep. Yeah. This is verse 3. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the Spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I'm, I'm more so, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteous, which is in the law, blameless." But what things we gain to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all, these, of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ the righteous, which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained or that I'm already perfected, but I press on and I lay hold of that which is Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind 
and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen? You know, you have to want to know him. You have to desire it. And I'm not just talking uh, a little bit. I mean, you really got to get after this. I mean, if you, just what it is. Um, you have to pursue God so that your heart is changed. You must run after it. And that you'll know, and I love this, so we know him. Wanting to be found in him. You know, that should be our desire. You know, when I talked about how David fixed his heart, he wanted to be known that this is my God and this is who I serve. And no matter what's going on, that's where my heart is. Amen? Um, let's go to John 14. And then I'm going to share with you what this guy said. And it just really touched my heart. It really affected me. John 14, verse 9 says this. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time? Anyone who's seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? I want you to think about this. He's not talking about physically. He is talking about spiritually. And I've been talking about the imagination. I've been talking about what does your heart see? So with that said... Danny, what's his last name? The guy that's silver hair, Terry, gave his speech about T.L. Osborne. Uh, Rusty, Nelson. Rusty Nelson. Anyway, I didn't know who Rusty was. But Rusty Nelson gets up, and he's been going to Mardi Gras for a number of years. And he, fact is, Terry said, Doug, he had black hair when I first saw him, and now he is silver hair. But he got up and he started sharing. He said, I got one moment with T.L. Osborne. And some of you may hopefully know who he is. But T.L. Osborne was a, <laughs> man, he touched the world, boy. I mean, he saw like lots of good things. So Rusty, or Danny, what is it, Rusty? Rusty said he picked him up from an airport and he got 20 minutes with him. And so they're driving. And so he asked him, he goes, well, what's your vision? How did you do what you're doing? And so he goes, T.L. or Osborne says, you've actually asked the wrong question. He said, most people want a vision for their ministry. And he said, but what you should really ask is that you would see how the Father sees and that you would feel how the Father feels. And so with that being said, he said, all those things that I did, all those places that I went, I never was led to go, ever. God did not tell me to go to Russia, did not tell me to go all these places. He said, what happened was, was I saw with his eyes, and I had to go. He started seeing like what the Father sees. He started feeling what the Father felt. And that's my prayer. And I pray it's your prayer. That that's how it will affect you. When you know that that coworker that you're living with or working with, they're lost completely. Amen? Or they need a healing. They need to know the truth. And you're that vessel. You're that witness. You're that person that can bring them that prophetic word. That word of healing, that word of comfort. Amen? Because that's really who you are. You're his ambassador. You are God in the flesh on this earth because you have an earth suit and he lives in you. Right? The other thing that I find interesting is, well, I want to go to it. John 5, verse 19. This is neat. It says this. Jesus gave them this answer. Very, very, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees his father doing because whatever the father does, the son also does. 
get a picture of that, of you being his son and you seeing and you hearing and you doing what your father wants you to do. Amen? Start seeing that with your heart. Start letting that grow big on you. Amen? Start letting it just meditate on that. Because you can do it. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is alive in you. Amen? And I know you may not feel that way, and that's okay. We're not talking about feelings. We're talking about what the truth says, and that's the truth. That's really who you are. You're not anything different. And just because you don't feel like that, that's okay. There were times I'm witnessing to people that I felt absolutely nothing. But I was not going to be intimidated. Period. Not going to do that. Not going to let fear come at me. Uh uh. Because that's not who I am. Amen. That's not who you are. 1 John 3. We'll go there real quick and then I'll be done. 1 John 3. I just want to start verse 1. I love that. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. This verse 2. Dear friends, now we are all children of God, and what we will be has not been made known, but what we know that when Christ appears... We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who ho have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. That's one thing that hope does. It purifies you. As you allow your heart, allow your imagination, allow that thing to just draw on what God says about you, because he tells you right there, you're a part of who he is. You're in Christ, you're his family, you're his anointed, you're his weapon, you know, you're his, because you're the one that got, you have the words of God, you have the words of life, you have the words that are affecting people, you have the gifts of the Holy Spirit that lives inside you, you have all these weapons that you can use, and he is declaring to you, go out and use them, amen? Step on out there, make a fool of yourself for him. And I know that's not encouraging, but I'll tell you what, it's actually fun. When you start realizing it, you know what? It doesn't depend on me. I'm sitting there and I'm doing what I believe God wants me to do, and I'm going to do my best and praise God. And you know what? It's crazy, but I've seen people that are, you know, they're not so super spiritual and anointed, whatever, and they see results. And I mean results. And you can do this. Amen? You got this. Easy peasy. That's what I kept telling this one guy. He said, I don't know if God can heal myself. Oh, man, that's easy peasy. That's so easy God can heal that. No big deal. You sure? I said, oh, yeah. You betcha. Prayed for him. Praise God. God healed. Amen. Had a gal. Had a back problem. She got healed instantly. You know, wham. I'm like, amen. I like those. You know, it's all good. Let's go back to this real quick. I want to say one more thing. I love this. But we know that when Christ appears, you know what that appearing means? Is when he reveals himself to you. When he starts showing you who he is. That's what that means. It's revelation. It's like him appearing to you. And you start understanding. You start getting more understanding of who you are. And who he is. And who you are. And who you represent. Amen. We shall be like him. You're like him. And the more you do this, the more you're like him. And that's his whole desire. You know, everybody wants, you know, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to be? I got news for you. There's one goal that God has for you. You know what it is? To be and act like Jesus. Period. Now, do we all do that? No. While we were down there, you can t tell Terry, there were some people down there. It was like they were preaching the law. All right? And the law is ugly. It's mean hateful. I mean, the way they were doing it, it's like, what? And this one guy came up to me, gay guy, talking to me, and he goes, man, I just don't like it. I said, well, I said, I said, now I'm just going to give you an example. I said, have you ever heard when Trump tweets and about Barr? 
And he goes, what do you mean? I said, well, how, how, when Trump makes this tweet about Barr, it's making Barr hard to do his job. And he goes, yeah, okay. And I said, that's what they're doing. It's making my job harder because of what they're preaching. Because what they're preaching was not is ugly, mean, hateful. And they were righteous, but everybody else is a sinner. You know? And I want to say, no, nah, Romans 3.23 takes care of all that for everybody. Thank God we don't get what we deserve because of Jesus. Amen. You know? And then I looked at him. I said, that's, that's the law. And I said, you've come to grace. <laughs> Amen. Anyway, let's pray. We'll get going. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that you love us. Father, thank you that we desire to prophesy. Father, we desire those spiritual gifts. Father, those things that you have for us. And Lord God, I just pray that we just walk in that. In Jesus' name, amen.